Hey guys, what is, ooh my her. What's up guys? It is Kay Jones coming at you with episode two of Let's Talk Star Wars. So I'm eating some pistachios right now. I know y'all want some of these nuts. Um, because these podcast videos are basically going to be really chill, you know? Just me talking generally about Star Wars and, um, etc. I put this ex episode to the same day as my first episode because first episode was more about, like, introduction, not Star Wars content. So we are getting into it. So, today's part is going to talk about the sequel series, or trilogy, excuse me, and my thoughts on it because... Every, that's the first thing people ask Star Wars fans. What are your thoughts on the sequel trilogy? <gasps> so, I'm going to be blunt and honest. But, at the same time, I want y'all to know that, like, I don't bash people who like the sequel trilogy. And the reason why is because I'm just happy that they're Star Wars fans. I'm happy that the sequel trilogy makes them happy and entertained and it brought them to the Star Wars universe. And so I don't bash people who like them just because they're not my favorite or that it's my least favorite trilogy. And I'll get into details about that. But that being said, it's not like, you know, I I just don't like people who like the sequel trilogy. You know, there are Raylo fans, there are all kinds of fans, Finn and Poe, General Hux, and I, I truly do support any Star Wars fans and what they like because people have different interests. Some people argue that The Last Jedi was their favorite movie. That was my least favorite movie. But you know what? We can have different opinions, you know? It's all chill. We all just need a hakuna or tatas in the comment section and just be chill. All right, so I think the sequel trilogy had huge potential. In fact, I was very excited about it. I dressed up in cosplay on the first day of it, ready to go. Um, it was entertaining, all of the movies were. But was it a disappointment? To me, personally, yes. I think the sequel trilogy should have never been made. If anything, it could have been its own separate trilogy. I don't think it had anything to do with Anakin Skywalker or Darth Vader. And the entire trilogy that we have from episode 1 to episode 6 is about Anakin Skywalker or him becoming Darth Vader and then his redemption. Sorry, I need a little sip of this Coke. I am not promoting Coke Zero, by the way. I'm just thirsty from these salty nuts. Alright, so I think, was it a money grab in my opinion? Absolutely. But do I think that there were some positives from the sequel trilogy? I do. I really do. It was a disappointment, uh, disappointment to me because there were so many overpowered scenes. That's not the main problem with the sequel trilogy. It was just something that bothered me like no one's business. Being able to force heal. <laughs> so what a slap in the face to Qui-Gon and... Obi-Wan and all of these characters that could force heal or if Padme were to die The whole reason why Anakin turned to the dark side because of Padme trying to save her If he could have just healed her. Oh my god I'm just I just that really bothered me personally. Um But I think it was more of the story There wasn't really a plan. It was a fan thrill like I said all the movies were entertaining and in a way, the sequel trilogy brought Star Wars back to life. And I hate to say that, but like, there was this really quiet time. The only thing that was out was like the animated series, The Clone Wars, which is fantastic. If you guys have not seen it, get Disney Plus and check that out. It is amazing. But I think the sequels brought back the spark. Not in the best way, but it did. Because now we have The Mandalorian. Now we have the Kenobi series coming out. We're probably going to have a Mace Windu trilogy. And all of these really great things. So, in a way, the sequel trilogy was a blessing and a curse. Because now we have these three terrible movies. 
<laughs> the, the actors did phenomenal, by the way. Daisy and Adam. They did great. They did everything they could with what they were given. So we have these three movies that bash the other movies in multiple different ways. They make Luke Skywalker seem like a bunghole. And it's just a whole hot mess, guys. And I think there it was completely unnecessary to have anything past episode 6 in Star Wars. If anything, it could have been a separate trilogy on its own about Rey. Not, it did not need to be involved in the Skywalker trilogy. And I, I don't agree with their political agendas. I'm cool with politics. I'm cool. We can talk about politics. You're not going to change my opinion. I'm not going to change your opinion. But we can have a civil conversation. And a lot of the things they were promoting in Star Wars was good. Like, you know, they want to say that blood isn't everything and that you can be family even if you're not blood related. There's many different ways that you can have these political agendas without deep-throating it into Star Wars. If it's naturally presented in the story, not forced. A little bit more Coke Zero up in here. So, you know, I just... A huge part of me is just disgruntled by the political agenda of Kathleen Kennedy. And, you know, I think it just drives me nuts. I don't know how she's still at Star Wars. Hopefully her... I think her contract is ending very soon within the year. And... The whole sequel trilogy is is a shame, and um, hopefully it will be brought or be removed from canon eventually because there's ways that they can do that with the world of worlds and things like that. And I, I just don't think it flowed at all. I think they messed up so badly after The Last Jedi. So many Star Wars fans like me gave it one more chance. And... Um, the last episode with Palpatine, I don't think it was the way to go to bring him back at all. I think he should have remained dead. It totally defeated the purpose of Vader saving Luke and trying to kill him. Does it make sense lore-wise? Yes, but no. Because in the Legends universe, you have Darth Plagueis. And if you haven't read the book Darth Plagueis, I highly recommend it. It is a fantastic book. But that is not canon material. You know, we say that Darth Plagueis was, in Legends, he was very involved in cloning and trying to prevent death and have this whole life forever immortality. And it makes sense if, you know, Sheev Palpatine, which is Darth Sidious, cloned himself or something, or just became, I don't know, everything was just overpowered in the sequel trilogy. You shouldn't have to try to defend him still being alive by going through loopholes. And loopholes that aren't even canon material yet. If anything, the Darth Plagueis book needs to be made canon. And on top of it, we need to have a sequel or some kind of... Not sequel, excuse me. Some kind of trilogy on Darth Plagueis. And I would love to get more characterization of him and Palpatine's relationship. And more about the Sith. Because oftentimes we see the perspective of Star Wars from the Jedi point of view, not the Sith point of view. And I'm somebody who truly believes in balance in life, kind of like Ahsoka does. So I just, it just did not connect at all. I would have been a little bit, I would have been way happier if Rey was a Kenobi. Because it would have made sense. Like, throughout the entire movies, they, Grievous even said that wherever there's a Kenobi, there's a Skywalker soon behind. And it just... The parallels would have been fantastic. If you're going to force Rey and Kylo to be a part of a sequel trilogy that probably shouldn't be there to begin with, please have parallels. Not once was Anakin Skywalker mentioned the Chosen One in the sequel trilogy at all. Not even The Rise of Skywalker. To me, that is a joke. <laughs> There's so many problems with that, guys. I mean, I just can't even. And although I'm bashing the sequel trilogy, I'm not 
bashing sequel um, fans. I noticed a lot of people who don't necessarily love Star Wars, like they haven't really watched the movies multiple times, etc. What is going on with my hair? Really enjoy the sequel trilogy a lot. Because, you know, they weren't, shall I say, the fans that nitpick every little thing. You know, they were just there. They hadn't seen Star Wars in years and they thought it would be fun since it's very popular. And, you know, it, they really enjoyed it and they didn't know that the sequel trilogy wasn't it, that good and it didn't really follow Darth Vader's story. But that being said, that they really enjoyed it and it brought them more to the Star Wars universe. And in that case, I'm very blessed. It brought more people to Star Wars and it also revamped it. So, I mean, the sequel trilogy is not necessarily a bad thing. <clears throat> Rey was a hot mess. I think the, it's great to have a female Jedi main character. I was very excited about that. Um, not because she's necessarily a female, but it is nice to see a main character as a female Jedi. You know, I think the problem is, is that she had no faults. And she learned how to be this badass Jedi within, like, one movie. Like, Anakin had all this training and he was the chosen one and took years and you know he was a pad one and like this chick had she was like op master jedi within like a movie i don't know bro i mean she didn't have many faults her characterization was fault flawed same with kylo had better characterization but still lacked a lot which is a complete shame because adam uh, Driver and Daisy had just did fantastic and you know that there's a problem when the actors aren't even happy with the way that the movie was presented or how the characters were presented. Mark Hamill had many complaints about how Luke was presented into the sequel trilogy and how he thought it did not fit Luke's character. You know he played Luke years and years ago but still he was able to recognize that this does not fit the luke skywalker that i played when when george lucas was the director um speaking of that george lucas cannot write dialogue at least the sequel trilogy ha trilogy had some nice dialogue and flowed in that regard but um yeah, I mean, Daisy and Adam said that there were problems with their characters and how they felt like that that a lot of it just did not flow and that, you know, a lot of the actors got hate because of that. Just like Hayden Christensen got hate. And it's a shame. Maybe 20 years from now, you know, the next generation of kids will love the sequel trilogy because they watched the sequel trilogy at 9, 10 years old, 12 years old, and maybe it will have different respect uh, 10 to 20 years from now, but as a fan who grew up in the prequel era and, uh, you know, watched the originals and such, it just, it didn't, it didn't hit right, guys, and that's, that's overall my opinion on the sequel trilogy. I would love to know what y'all think. I, I think that it's a blessing and a curse, and I'm just thankful that we're getting new Star Wars content, and I'm thankful that Disney recognizes how, how bad this has gone. You know, I like that George Lucas is planning to consider bringing back a lot of Legends characters in their own trilogies like M Mara Jade, um, bringing back a younger Luke Skywalker, and things like that. Um, Mace Windu having his own uh, trilogy, or sorry, series. And you know, I'm just glad we're getting that content now with The Mandalorian, and it's just... It was, I think... A blessing in disguise, and though it was terrible, it sparked a whole new era of Star Wars. Some good, some bad. I just think we need to get um, the whole political agenda out of here. I think that you can have a lot of great story in Star Wars, just like redemption and love, beauty, peace, balance. I think that, you know, there's a whole lot of things that you can put in the Star Wars that naturally fits into the story and isn't forced. You know, especially when it comes to, like, um, the gay relationships, for example. You know, a lot of that feels a little forced. But in the reality, if you look at the Star Wars universe and all of these species, and it's so diverse. 
if anything, it would be kind of natural to see in Star Wars some diversification when it comes to sexuality and such. Um, you know, like gays, gay couples and things like that. And I think that you can naturally present that in a story without it being forced. You know, like just build some characterization, not just have two people making out in the background. We don't know anything about those characters. I mean, you know, in... And not all of that was presented in a bad way. You know, I, I support diversification. I support good, genuine stories that have meaning and, you know, a message behind it. But not when it's forced and just unorthodox and messy. So, I mean, Star Wars has tons of potential, especially since Dave Filoni and, um, gosh, what's his name? Dave Filoni and um, John Favreau, I believe. Now that they're working more into the Star Wars universe with George Lucas, and I truly think once George Lucas uh, passes away, I think Dave Filoni and John Favreau will be the next George Lucas, so to speak. Um, on top of the sequel series, I think we're still seeing some problems within Lucasfilm. You know, wanting to hire certain uh, just wanting to hire more women just for the sake of having more women in Lucasfilm. Like, who cares what gender you are? Don't look at gender. Hire somebody because of their creativity. Hire somebody because they know Star Wars and have genuinely good ideas and stories. Hire someone not because of their gender, but because of what they're worth and what they can bring to the universe. Um, and if that happens to have more men or if it happens to have more women, so be it, you know. And I know it's more complicated than that. But, you know, I think that um, we need to have some grace, too, and just see what happens. But as for the sequel trilogy, I think it was a mistake. I'd like it to be not part of canon. I'd like it to be probably like a world of worlds other situation but you know the reality is is that we may not get that and we just have to move past it and hope for you know be blessed that i brought new fans and hope for great star wars content in the future so anyway guys feel free to follow me on instagram instagram is like my social media for star wars and i post star wars stuff all the time i'm also selling some awesome star wars pins so if you like to to collect limited edition Star Wars pins. You can check that out. And um, I'll catch y'all later. I'll probably be posting an episode a week. So bye guys.